Today we're interviewing Laura Olson, who's Mrs. Andrew Olson, and it's spelled L-A-U-R-A Olson, O-L-S-E-N. And the date is October 15th, 1980 in Withy, Wisconsin. Good afternoon, Laura. Good afternoon. Would, would you like to tell us just a little bit about, you're one of the deans that has been in our community for quite a while. Would you like to tell us just a little bit about uh, where, you, where you came from, yeah, how you got I here? I came, came from Denmark, and my parents' name were um, Soren Nielsen and Anna Nielsen. And uh, I was born on Morse, that's a little island in July, on June 12, 1895. And uh, why I came to America, it was my brother that went over first. And um, when he came back, he told us what a wonderful country it was. And he brought Sears rubber catalog along and we studied it. And, and especially the uh, stout people. And we wondered if people were really so big in America. <laughs> I mean, he told us some of them were. And, uh, what year would this have been that your brother, now your brother's name was? Thomas Nielsen. Thomas, Thomas Nielsen. That would have been in um, 1914. 1914, he came back to Denmark again. He went in 1911, and then came back in 14. Yeah, I mustn't tell you about this. That's, that's okay. Oh, yeah. Makes the story more interesting. Yeah. And, uh, and of course, um, at first we heard regular from him. But then um, it was uh, summer. We didn't hear all summer. And we read in our newspaper so hot it was in America. And my mother was sure enough Thomas had died from the heat. But uh, just before Christmas time, then my mother came over to see me on the neighbor farm. And she had a letter in her hand, and I could see something good had happened. She had a smile on her face. And it was Thomas that was going to come home. So when he came home, you know, we all enjoyed all the things he brought. He brought all kinds of um, ear corn, red, and white, and yellow. And, uh, and there was some kind of corn we put in the frying pan and it exploded and it tasted so good. <laughs> and um, we enjoyed him to visit with him so much that winter. But along uh, towards spring, then he decided he was going to go to America again. So we thought maybe it would be fun to go along. So we all bought a ticket and we went along. And it was a nice, pleasant, pleasant trip down to Esbjerg. And not, not so nice over the North Sea. We sailed on a small boat and it was so crowded. There was no bed for everybody. So we had to sit up on deck all night, some of us. And and people were sick and throwing up in all directions. But finally, England was in sight, and we all felt better. And we had a nice train ride across England. To Liverpool, where we boarded the Lusitania. And we were on our way. The ship was like a big city with all kinds of shops. And we had a nice room and good food. Finally, on the fourth morning, New York was in sight. The state of Liberty looked beautiful, and we were ferried over to Ellis Island, where a doctor looked us over. If anybody was sick, they were sent back home with Lusitania, and you were not let in unless you had money. My brother gave me $25 I held in my hand while I went by three policemen, and I gave them back to him at the end of the line. In New York, we were warned to be sure to take food along with us, as we would not be able to buy anything before we came to Chicago. 
Thomas was the only one of us that could count money and speak English. So he bought a big bunch of bananas and a loaf of bread and a ring of bologna. And on that we lived for two nights and one day. We had uh, numbers pinned on us and when they um, brought in a big sign with our number on, we followed and was put on the immigrant t train. It was real old and as simple as it could be. No place where you could wash yourself and just drinking water was provided. When you opened a toilet seat, you could see the ground. How wonderful when we came to Chicago and we could get washed up and put clean clothes on and again get a good meal. The rest of the trip was very pleasant from Chicago to Medelia, where we stayed with Danish friends. And next morning, we all had a place to work. I worked for a Danish lady that had a boarding house. Ten men came every day and had their meals. I baked mountains of pancakes every morning. And the man I married was one of the boarders. <laughs> He owned 80 acres at a little Danish town called Witty. Some Danish people from Chicago had built a church and hall, so we came here in 1915. He had a contract to build us a nice little four-room house where we lived for 59 years till he died in 71. So that's all I have here now. Then, uh, then the other, I don't know what you want with that, so where I, where I tell about, so about life. From, uh, yeah, life, when you came to Withy, yeah, you yeah. have a lot of the neighbors mentioned here. Yeah. So much has been written about the hard times the earliest settlers went through. <coughs> I'm going to tell you about the good times we had. Through all the years, we have had so many good neighbors. When we came here over 50 years ago, we were young people. Now we are the oldest. What I remember best are the birthday parties. We came uninvited and without gifts. In the early days, we brought our songbooks along, and A.P. Anderson and Johanna led us in singing. <coughs> Christina Jensen also was a real good singer. We had coffee and cake, and the whole family came along. Rudolf Nielsen and Nicolina were from Yulan. Their children were Hans and Esther. They moved up here from Chicago, and we admired Mrs. Nielsen's nice furniture. She had a red parlor set and pretty lamps and knickknacks. <coughs> and she always cooked chocolate for her birthday parties, an old Danish custom. Hans was real small when they moved up here, and she told me how they made him a play yard from four logs so he could um, not get lost in the woods. <coughs> that was a constant worry that the children would wander into the woods and get lost. You could always see on the people's furniture if they had lived somewhere else before coming here. After they started here, all their money had to be spent on horses, cows, machinery, barns, silo, and dynamite. The house and furniture had to wait. We sometimes had to take in a dynamite box to sit on when we had company. But those things did not worry us. I think we appreciated things more because we had to wait for them. Hans Fredrickson, we never know very well, but one winter morning I was on my way to church and he came by the corner on his way to the creamery and asked, want to hang on? I climbed up in the sleigh and sat on a milk can and in a few minutes we were up at the church. It sure was better than walking through the deep snow. Reverend Dixon was our minister at that time. One summer the ladies decided to have a quilting party. So uh, we met at each other's homes and we had some reading or just visited while we sewed. My quilt is almost worn out, but I treasure it when I think of those who helped to make it. We finally, uh, you know, the family we got to know first was the Bergstroms. They had four children, Harvey, Florence, Harriet, and Tucci and Edward. 
Mrs. Bergstrom was Swedish and Marie, Mr. Bergstrom was Swedish. I'm, I'm making... That's okay. <clears throat> you can just make the corrections right as you go along. <laughs> And Marie was Danish. Her mother, Mrs. Peterson, was from Morsi. And we really had a good time remembering things from our old home. She told me that when she was a young girl, she came to work in Yelby Mill. And she was lucky enough to land a miller's hired man. When I went to church, I always started early so I could stop in and visit a few minutes with her. She lived to be very old, but had to stay in bed the last two years. Soren Peterson was the biggest and richest farmer in the whole neighborhood. He had a great big barn, lots of cows, milking machine, tractor, and Ford car long before the rest of us. If we needed to borrow a piece of machinery, Soren had it. Hilda was Norwegian and their children were Carl, Carlina, and Alva. In those days, it took almost two days to travel to Nielsville. First they had to go to Marsfield, then wait for a train to Nailsville. After people started to get automobiles, they could drive down in the summer. But it was really only four or five months that we could use the car. There was deep mud in the spring and fall, and roads were not plowed in the winter. The snow was so deep we could walk over the fence posts sometime. Children went to school on skis. Jensai Jensens moved up here from Ringstead, Iowa, where they had farmed. They too brought along nice furniture and a Ford car and fixed up the old brown place inside and out so it hardly looked like the same place. They had the nicest flower garden in the neighborhood. We had so many good times there. Their children were Arna, Leonard, Mildred, and the Erling. The family, the family that lived north of the church were called Norborne, and some that lived south of Owen lived on the Philippines. Our ministers in uh, the last 50 years have been Dixon, Peterson, Mickelson, Holst, Bungar, Nielsen, and Knudsen. Anna and Jens Jakobsen were from Schellheim, and had lived in Copenhagen, and I always thought it was a mistake they had left Denmark. They were always homesick. What a joy it was to them when they got a horse and buggy and could drive to church. Anna was a wonderful housekeeper. Her home was like a dollhouse, and we had in, in many enjoyable birthday parties at her home. Anna was not well and died when she was only 55. They had one son, Niels, and Jens Jakobsen went to live with him after the farm was sold. Stina and Jürgen Peterson were from Schellen, and they were always happy they had come to America. They celebrated their golden wedding and had all their children and their family home. The congregation had a big party for them, but Jürgen had to be in a wheelchair and did not live long afterwards. <coughs> Their children were Peter, Marie, Carl, Christian, Sven, and Einar. After Jürgen passed away, Einar built a new house and Stina stayed with him. She had to be in bed a long time, so when Einar had to go someplace, Johanna and I took turns and stayed with her. Einar had so little time to do his housework. So I washed dishes and put things in the cupboard. He liked Johanna best. She left things alone. When I had been there, he couldn't find anything for a couple of days. The Danish language could be heard everywhere, in the streets and in the stores. But they were puzzled at the uh, mill when Jens Jakobsen asked for a sack of clee. And Rasmus Jorgensen asked for puddle sugar. My great gave him powdered sugar. Hosey Hansen and Augusta lived just a little, uh, just a mile south of us, and we walked through the woods to visit one another. We had to crawl through railroad fences, and if the creek was high, we took off shoes and stockings and waded through. They too had a golden wedding and had a big party at the hall. 
Anna and Tora were the only ones I know of their children. Our nearest neighbor was Sorn Anderson. He was one of the real early settlers and could tell many interesting stories about conditions at that time. Our eighty was not fenced, so he used it for pasture. The cows would go with the creek and he had to go to Owen to get them chased back. By the time he got up there again, sometime they had gone over again. His wife died while they lived in Racine. His children were Aletta, Carl, Soren, Annis, and Ola. Ola was county clerk at Nielsville in 1917 when my husband took out his citizen's papers. Ola was his witness, and he was invited to their home for dinner. Another family we enjoyed very much were Blacksmith Hansons. They were from Shellac. Their children were Walter, Dagmar, Cecilia, and Carolina. Wilhelm was the youngest. A.P. Anderson was from Fyn, and Johanna was from Jylland. Their children were Agnes, Skjold, and Dan. Who was the youngest? Dan, who was the youngest? Yeah, I must. They came from Oskar, Minnesota. Johanna could make the best coffee cake in the whole community. So when her birthday came up, she made a coffee cake, and I did not even see her. Dan owned 80 acres of land east of us, and morning and night he went over there to milk. She rode along, and she set the coffee cake while I was out milking. In the morning it was in the pan ready for the oven when I came in. When Dan and Wilma got married, they built a small house and lived many years on the home farm. Their children were John, Anita, Archer, and Alice. Alfred was in the Navy for four years when he came home for a visit. Wilma brought over a little bag of sugar so we could bake a cake for him. Something um, we could not do otherwise, as sugar was rationed. Other wonderful friends were the Bunnisons. They came from what was then Slesby, and they were like grandparents to our children. In the early 20s, a terrible accident happened. Beck and Bergstrom were helping Willie Hansen fill silo, and the machinery broke down, so they were going to make a fast trip to town and buy repairs. Willie was driving did not see the train coming. It hit them, and Willie was killed, leaving wife and seven children. Burston was put on a stretcher and taken to Chippewa on the train. We hoped he would live, but his neck was broken, and he passed away. The next day, Beck was badly shaken up, but not really hurt. and Beck came from Sleepsweet. They had four children then. When they came to America, they always came to visit us at Christmas. Their children were Tackle, Jens, Friedrich, Anna, Peter, Hilton, Elena, Hans, and Alfred. They had gone to school and learned the German language, but liked the Danish best. Hilton was killed in the war and buried in France. Christian Beck and Ellen still come in to visit me, and we have a game of Sherwinsel. Yeah, that's exciting. That's all I have now. Okay. Uh, when you came to Withy, the church had already been established here, hadn't it? The Nazareth Lutheran Church is the one we're talking about. Yes. Could you tell us just maybe a little bit about how many people actually belonged to it and what the size was of it? I'm afraid. <laughs> Were there very many people that belonged to it at yeah. that time? Yes, there was. Were, were all those families around yeah. here, were they yes. all pretty much all, Danish? All Danish, yeah. All Danish. Yeah. That I should have looked up. Because no, that's, I, that's, that's okay. Uh, so actually, most of your your uh, social life, you might say, yeah. revolved around going to church and activities yes. that the church had. Yes. Mm-hmm. And uh, I joined uh, Lady Seed in 1916. <laughs> And you've been a member ever since? Yes. That's a, a lot of 
quilts and <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah we've done a lot of different tents and uh, and in the uh, old times we cleaned uh, before summer school you know then the, the committee went up and cleaned and before summer school mm -hmm. and uh, the ladies cleaned the church well they didn't do that yet besides the church building a new building um, is there any way that you think the church has kind of changed over the years? Well, especially the language. It was, um, that was uh, kind of hard years. Uh, the old people hate to stop the Danish, you know. And that was, and, and it had to be done. Why, why do you say that it had to be done? Oh, because uh, they married into families where they could not speak. They could not speak Danish. And, uh, it almost had to be done. Mm -hmm. If they went to church, then they couldn't no. understand what was no. going on no. if they didn't no. speak no. Danish, understand it. Yeah. There, was, there was a few that learned Danish, like uh, Nels Jensen's, like uh, the Blocks. Uh, they learned Danish and could speak it real good. Mm -hmm. Do you think people depend on the church as much nowadays for their social life as they did then? No. No, I don't know. I don't think that was, uh, seemed like everything. Uh, well, your parties and everything else were held yes, at the hall. Yeah. And, uh, uh -huh, sure. Probably people, you think that the fact that they normally didn't have cars and had horses and they didn't travel as far no, to find entertainment mm -hmm. might have made a difference. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Now, you lived in the community, first of all, in the, in the country as a farm wife, and now you're living in the city. Can you see some changes that have happened around Withy from the time that you first came here till, let's say, 1980 now? Oh, yes. What are, could you tell us about some of these that you've seen happen? Oh, yeah, I remember the first cars that came on the road. And, <laughs> and the first car we had... And, do you remember what kind it was? Yeah. We had an old overland. It wasn't so very good. Then we got a new Ford, and that was good. That was wonderful. <laughs> but what year would this have been? Oh, you recall? maybe 1920 or so. You probably were one of the first people to get a car around here, weren't you? No. Oh, very strong. Or Bergen, you mentioned Bergstrom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sean Peterson had one first, and Jensen's brought one from Iowa. Mm. Yeah. So we were not the first. Mm -hmm. If they came from someplace with money, then they yeah. may, yes. may have had a car. Yeah, they had a car, yeah. Mm -hmm. How about uh, buildings around here? For yeah. instance, the, where you live now? Yeah. In the trailer park here. Well, uh, in a, in a way, Whitty was much bigger when we came up here. It was three hotels, and you know, on account of the sawmill, the people had work. It was three hotels, and uh, and I don't know how many stores, three, four grocery stores. So the the town was really bigger. And it is now. As long as they had more people, they had yeah. had to have. Yes. Um, but in, uh, in, uh, and then when this, uh, that's only about 10 years ago since the, this trailer court was started, 10 or 12 maybe. And, um, and uh, there's room for 21 trailers, and it's always full. We all like it here. What was this land before it was made into a trailer court? It was a, a, a slough or something. <laughs> it just west of Whitty. And as, when it rains, it was one big lake. Just a swamp type yeah. of uh, yes. land. Yes, cattails growing and everything. But then they filled it up and it makes a nice place to live. Mm -hmm. 
Now you mentioned that Withy used to be a community, a very active community with sawmills and uh, yeah, lots of... Sawmill in, uh, lots yeah, the sawmill was in, there was one in Withy too. And we had a few logs sold at the Paulson Mill. Paulson's, yeah. No. But I have never been out there because we didn't go very far in the mm -hmm. days, but my husband took them up. So now with um, the community changing, Withy is almost kind of a retirement community, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it's mostly retired people. And we sure miss the grocery store. Yeah, just a just a nice place to retire to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if we have no. the in store. <laughs> yes, that that would that's the one oh, thing that oh that I miss that the town yeah. except it's too far to walk. I mean, it's almost yeah. out on the edge of town where there actually is a store. Oh, yeah. I can't walk way down. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the, one of the things Withy could do to improve yeah. the city, would to have a little yeah. little store more centrally located. Grocery store, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can you think of any other ways that? changes that you've seen over the years or things that, uh, how about in the, our teenagers or youth of today? Do you think they're much different or that things are different than when your children were growing up or when you were growing up? Well, they have different things and do, uh, do different things, otherwise, uh, and when or as they grew up, they had to make their own fun. And I almost think they had more good fun. Mm -hmm. We always know where they were. They went up to the hall, you know, the Danish young people. They played ball every Sunday up at the hall. And they always had a good time. And they didn't have a car, so they couldn't go that far from no. home? You didn't worry about having a, a horse accident <laughs> too much? <laughs> no, but... Um, and, uh, and we always celebrate the 4th of July, then we had some speaker, either a minister or you know, some speaker from somewhere. And we sang, sang Danish songs. And Singing was a real popular oh, really, thing yeah. to do, wasn't oh, it? Yes. No, I think we were all kind of homesick and, and we needed that singing. Mm. <laughs> were they religious songs or songs about Denmark or what? Oh, what kind were they? No, they were more songs, really. Not so much uh, hymns. No, we had a songbook, you know, didn't we? About Denmark and, uh, and America, too, you know. Mm. And, uh, and we enjoyed real much to sing. I notice we're getting, now that we have a, it's been a n number of years since we've had a Danish minister. And now that we have a Danish minister, we're doing more singing. Yes, uh -huh. sure. Yeah, which yeah. is, um, yeah, like you say, it's yeah. something that yeah. you always Good. did, mm -hmm. that Danish yes. people particularly did. Yeah. And, uh, and I remember when Ellen was in high school, then uh, uh, Louise, she started um, a sextet, you know, the six girls singing that she mm. played. Louise Hansen? Yeah. Oh, and uh, and we sang at uh, parties and programs and all of the hmm. PTAs. And, and we had a lot of fun. How did you celebrate Christmas? Oh, by um, we had um, Christmas Eve service up at the church first, and then we had our family Christmas at home. Did you dance around the Christmas tree? Yeah, we had that later on at Christmas. That was usually second Christmas day, the day after Christmas. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, the Sunday school children and, and the parents, they came. And they danced around the tree and sang New Harvey Yuligan. <laughs> and uh, we had coffee and candy. And you made another party out of it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was fun, and uh, they usually had a program, and uh, and the kids they were either singing or saying their pieces, or it was fun. It was it was nice when the yeah. Uh, yeah. everybody got together. Yes, and it was. It was really they all had the same interest, being from yes. from Denmark. Your heritage yeah. was all the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, and the hall was really full uh, for them Christmas parties.
Baker's Barn, and that cost uh, that thirty uh, three dollars, I think. He made he made that himself. Now, was that from wood that he cut uh, on the no, farm? No, no, there was some. Uh, he bought. He some actually bought tire paper and stuff. You know, and these were the first horses we had. Now, were these were pictures that Andrew took and yes, developed himself yes, in his yeah. own little dark room. Yeah, and this is where our home was built. Right in the woods with yeah, right in the woods. No road into it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's it's good a person takes a picture because you yeah. forget what oh, yeah. the land yeah. actually looked like. That's, that's why it is so uh, and that's how we cleared land, you know, there was so many big stumps and horses and Yeah. And these are some uh, lots of muscle. First chickens and my first baby. <laughs> And these were the Danish school teachers. And Alfred went to school back then. And that was Ruth Peterson. And uh, now Ruth Miller and Ruth Peterson. I think both of them were Ruth. And the, and the uh, horse was Alva Peterson's. And she was such a, a swell girl, you know. She can drive into school with a horse. And one day the horse went home. <laughs> Now this looks like almost like a Shetland type pony. Yeah, it is a kind of beautiful little horse. Mm -hmm. And uh, they lived up here, you know, at, at that time. Oh, north, north of Withy. Yeah. Or and, not north, west of Withy. Yeah, and they're still mm -hmm. and, and they're still living. And this is how we went on Sundays. Horse and horse and wooden horse. wheel yeah. wagon. This is where they started on the first barn, just this one. Did you, how many people built the barn? Did you have kind of a barn raising uh, type of thing? Not really, no. Papa and uh, Jack Welty was the builder. And then Papa helped him and sometimes the neighbors, but not so much. Mm -hmm. they, they did most of it themselves. Everybody was probably building their own. Yeah. And, uh, and there wasn't so many that had time. Mm -hmm. And the Papa was a kind of self help sort of person, mm -hmm. you know, he got to do his own thing. And, and this is how um, we had a little hired man, we had Pete Beck to help. That's how they stacked the hay when, when we didn't have a barn. Mm -hmm. And this is one of my first flocks of chickens. Seems like everyone had chickens so that they would have yeah, eggs to eat yeah, and there was, meat. Yeah. yeah. And the baby got a little bigger. I guess they got the biggest trees. Since they lived on the corner that I mentioned, and um, in Jensen's, mm -hmm. uh, Jensa Jensen's, that's Erling's father and mother. And this was in, uh, Mrs. Jacobson, she sits with her, or Ellen. And, um, and this lady is still living. She's a year older than me. So what is her name? Uh, Ellen Johansson. Oh. And that's her husband. They used to live where that old silo was down, uh, down the floor. Oh, corner. down there. Yeah. yeah. It's not and, uh, and now we might see each other. I might go to Florida this winter. So, mm -hmm. so I have had a letter from her. Let's see him. Look for it. What to see me? <laughs> and this is the Bunnison family that came out to see us. Alfred and uh, and Hans. They were the same age. Where were they from? Oh, they were from uh, Slesvig. You know, I I named them. You know. Oh. Mm -hmm. you know. Is this a goat or a calf? Calf. And a dog. <laughs> But that too is kind of dark. But there you can see the Bergeson place. See how bare it was, you know, and the the uh, brush was cut. And now it's all grown up again. But see what a pretty window I had with uh, hand crocheted curtains and, mm. and uh, so many flowers, flowers blooming in the windows. Yeah. You always had a lot of flowers inside yes. and outside, didn't yeah. you? Yeah. That was my hobby and his too. My husband liked them too. I know whenever the church needed flowers and usually yeah. came out to your house because <laughs> Mrs. Olson had the flowers. 
And there he built a new chicken house. And that took all summer because he didn't have much time. The weed, they, could, they grew up taller than the walls inside. <laughs> And there you can see the milk pail and the little milk can. Is that a regular milk can or cream can? No, oh, it was a regular, regular milk, milk can. can. And then we had one more that was bigger, mm -hmm. but we didn't have much milk at that time. And there we have some more chickens and a new baby. There's Ellen and the dog we had. We've had many dogs, you know, and and they were just as dear to the kids. Well, I noticed you have a different kind of chicken. Yeah, I had. Sometime I had Rhode Island Reds, and they were so good to eat and to sell. But then they wanted to sit so much, you know. So um, the, the white leghorns were the most profitable. Where did you get your chickens from? Oh, from uh, many, many places. So, and and uh, for many years I hatched them myself. Oh. But then uh, we got so uh, we we thought it paid better to uh, buy 300 from a uh, hatchery. And we usually bought pullets. And uh, that way we would have between four and 500 layers. Mm. Uh, did you have a hatchery nearby? Well, or did we, you have to stand we by used mail, to drive or? to um, was it Meadow Meal Hatchery? That's from, uh, by Boyd, I think. We used to drive over and get them oh. there. And, uh, and sometimes we sent. And sometimes we raised our own. Mm -hmm. I had two incubators. That's why you needed a big chicken house. Yeah, two. I had two of them. Well, that was me that wanted that because I thought, you know, I can make a little money. Mm -hmm. yeah. And there he's gone out to cut hay for the first time. He was with two horses and mm -hmm. a yeah, and uh, I don't steel I, wheeled. I don't think I had a, I don't think I had a clothesline because I got the diapers on the fence. <laughs> Can you compare this with, you yeah. know, what you see nowadays with these yeah. humongous yeah. tractors oh, and um, yeah. this probably looks like a five foot more. Yeah, they have. but uh, oh, we thought that was wonderful mm -hmm. the machine. The, the very first field of the oats we had, and we had about one acre, and he caught that all by hand and I, and I rolled the bundles tight. We weren't so helpless. You know. <laughs> But nowadays, unless you have a machine, yeah. you don't yeah. know what to do with it. Yeah, that's our first two children. And one of the first cows. I think everybody had a cow named Nellie. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> it was a common name. What is this in the background here? And, um, sunflowers. Oh. Things grew so good, you know, the land was good, and we got it cleared. What did you raise those for? Oh, I think the chickens. Oh, yeah. And there he used to drive school wagon. He used to drive up the roundhouse Nelsons and slucks. They rode in the school oh. wagon. How many children could he haul in it? Oh, 10, 12. Oh, it was a big box that Beck had made it, and we bought it from Beck. This looks like, you know, you see the Amish going by in the wintertime. This yeah, is an ex extra big uh, well, buggy-type yeah, box. And there was a uh, door with a window in, in the back, and that's mm -hmm. all. Then he had a little window. He could holler when they had to get out, you know. <laughs> and that's awesome, too. With a little horse. And that's the first car. What's on this side? Thank you. There we built a new port into our house. And, and, uh, and there we had the screens and, and uh, something to own up there. It's like your morning glories or something like that almost. Uh, yeah, I think it was. 
Well, it was, was a wild, uh, wild grief, but uh, I think in, uh, one year I had morning glories too. Mm -hmm. And you know, it was fun to sit in there, inside the screen and watch the birds make nests. Mm -hmm. Them little bitty birds, they would tramp and tramp in their nest, you know. <laughs> it was so cute. <laughs> Bring in some yeah. straw and tramp. And yeah. <laughs> It's so imagine by the mm. back balls that, you know, mm -hmm. Christmas there, I don't cut, that those vegetables make a nest there. Yes. The hawks and things were always taking the chickens, you couldn't have anything. So there, they shot one. That is a huge owl. Yeah, 42 mm. inches, you know. My goodness. Now he has his arms out, and the wings are as yeah. big as what his yeah, arms yes. are. Yes, sure. Hmm. And there we got the new fort. That was that was a good one. And uh, there, there you can see I had a big flock of chickens. That's the house he was building over mm -hmm. in the other. Papa sat and looked at that picture one. One day, oh, not so long ago, he said, how pretty you were, Mama. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think I was ever pretty. <laughs> we know. Notice that there is a silo <clears throat> on here. Yeah. Were there many silos built at that time? Uh, no, there was been, a few. It's been a kind yeah. of a new... Yeah, and, uh, and after, uh, after we built, uh, then we never had to buy hay anymore. It seems like uh, we could never get enough hay together mm. before we had the silo. So that hey, helped a lot. You got the machine on the night. What kind of crops did farmers generally raise? Now you have 1929 listed yeah. right there. What, what kind of crops oats, did they usually? Uh, oats. And then we raised a lot of rutabagas. They were so good for the cows. Yeah, and, that's right. and we could yeah. sell them too. Yeah, rutabagas. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. potatoes. We had potatoes to I sell too. Potatoes, yeah. Yeah, yeah I used potatoes. Take it to you take this Nielsen. captain. Nielsen. Nielsen of the county fair? Yeah. How did you get it down there? Oh, um, somebody had a truck that came around and picked up all the. He was in the forage club, you know. Mm. So, and, now, what, he, and he stayed down there till the fair was over. But what year would this have been? Actually, 4-H to this area then is not really new. Yeah, he, he must have been 12 or so. And we should figure out. 23 or so? 22? 19. 23 or something? Yeah. In the 19, early yeah. 1920s. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you recall what the name of the 4-H club was? No, it was to the Curtis one year. One year. And, uh, and what else? You know, it's so long ago to that kind of... Oh, that's kind of I never realized that the 4-H clubs, you know, were around yeah. here that early. Well, it was Ed Peterson, uh, you know, Ralph Peterson's father, that was the leader. He he was quite a cattle man, you know, and I know a lot about stuff. I think he go with that. You know, see, Tracy had taken sewing and baking and pony beautification, and I don't know what. So, see, Tracy had picked up beekeeping. Dorothy sent her material to uh, Madison, you know, so they could learn about it. And we sent for a uh, beginner's outfit at Sears Rubik. And that's how uh, <laughs> we got started. Okay. Then when she left home, then the Papa took over. He always kind of wanted bees because he knew how, you know, his father had bees. This old car he bought for five dollars. <laughs> and oh, he used it a lot to go to school in. And the neighbor kids, the uh, Beck's kids and the Jensen's kids came over and helped him because then they could get rides, you know. <laughs> They had more fun. They had really more good out of a tank like that than if you had given them a new one. They might have smashed up the new one. And <laughs> this way they fixed this old thing up and bought tires and whatever that was needed, you know. And, and they had so little money to do it.
Oh, that was the girls when they were little. And that was in the wartime when um, when I made something for the girls, then I always made something for Alfred too. This this set his wife got now. Even if he wasn't home, he didn't get cheated. Well, he gets this uh, book that 